Yeah. 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 For the record, I think this is BS. I should be standing next to Joe so you guys can ask him all the questions. <laughs> yeah. comes next. What have you kind of come up with when you've been looking at answers of, of what happened down the stretch here? Um, Eliminating the Jets from the postseason. Uh, it's a shame, too, because they got off to a really good start. But then fell apart down the stretch, and that's where the Jets are. The Jets are now eliminated. So let's start with the positives. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. That they're not far off. They were 6-3. and three. I feel pretty good about the Jets for next year. This is a really good roster. To get clarity, sometimes it's painful. I think Robert Sala, I'm keeping receipts, right? That was his phrase at the beginning. I think he got a lot more right this year than he got wrong. What is the very first thing mm. that has to be done? Ooh, got to get a quarterback. Do you want to bring a veteran quarterback in here? Like, is that... I will, that those are, you know what? That's a joke question. <laughs> and you guys actually get to ask him that. <laughs> you know, how, how that quarterback room looks uh, next year. Um, look, we're just, we're, we're at the very infant stages of this, of putting this offseason plan together. But, um, you know, we're going to explore every single avenue that we have to, to upgrade this team, upgrade this roster. But we didn't get into specifics on names, but it was it was uh, talked about that we do plan on bringing a veteran quarterback if we can. Uh, we do want to continue working with Zach and uh, uh, and continue to develop him. And let's start with the New York Jets. When I look at this list of teams that is going to be in the market for quarterbacks, I think they're the one with the most potential. Jets should seize the moment in this op in this window and just be like, you know what, like let's do it. They believe that they are a deep run playoff team yep. with a quarterback. Garrett Carr kind of fits the bill. I think they should trade for Aaron Rodgers. When we go so look I. at the free agent quarterbacks, there's not a ton you of great that names. piece. They leapfrog Buffalo. I think Carr they is leapfrog great. Jacoby right? yeah. Brissett's not that guy. Andy Dalton's what not that guy. What is going on between the Jets and Rodgers? It seems like if the genie is this now is out of the, the Green Bay step, bottle, hopefully, in, in, in a string of bigger steps so. for the Jets. Right. You know, the and higher you, the, the Jets, higher the height you have to send from that bill rise. It's, it's more, more you you the way you have yeah. to yeah. sort of toward the end of your career. I think he's still a solid tank. Yes, the same thing Rodgers makes a scary play. If he lands with the Jets, what would be New York City's biggest part? Should be there for you. Come to New York City and wins a Super Bowl championship in this city. It don't get much bigger than that. So you're gonna look right into this lens, say Aaron Rodgers, flight 23, night clock. Oh nice. Aaron Rodgers, flight 23. Bright lights of New York City shine down on the Jets as they enter a pivotal offseason. After a 7-10 season, this team is determined to reach new heights with their eyes set on the ultimate prize. But in this market, the pressure is immense. Every move, every decision is under the microscope. For the Jets, the time is now to fly. Robert Sala, flight 23. All right, coach. Um, now that you've had some time to reflect, how would you sum up the 2022 season for the Jets? Let's talk about the state of the New York Jets. This is what's gonna dictate if this era is gonna be successful, because if you do nail it, 
then it has the potential to be the start of something very positive, very successful for a very long time. 22 season for the Jets was um, a bit of an up and down, right? Like, I just remember covering games early in the season and the vibe was so great. The young guys were playing so well. Looks up the seat, fires, caught! Touchdown! Garrett Wilson scores! Paul running free, side to 10, he's gonna score! He's gone! 20, 10, 5, touchdown! see the seeds that had been planted and there was the possibility of growth. Sauce Gardner's there, and it's knocked away! Sauce Gardner in position on Gabe Davis! And some guy named Quinnen, and runs into a cheetah! <laughs> Quinnen, ah! the sideline, intercepted! Great catch by D.J. Reed. Jermaine, Jermaine, you remember what you said to me when you walked out of my office? You said, come get me. Yes, Guess what yes, we're sir. doing? We're coming to get you. He chased, dragged around the ankles and brought down Jermaine Johnson. 2022 season for the Jets was promising. Um, a lot of bright spots, but I guess disappointing in the end. Obviously a little disappointed with the way everything finished and uh, we're very confident in the people that we have in this building, the players that are in the locker room. You know, it showed a lot of promise. We got a lot of young guys that are continuing to grow and, you know, so it's, there's a lot of promise uh, and a lot of excitement that, that's going to lead into this 23 season. I got to be honest with you, I cannot wait, right? This is a massive, massive offseason for the New York Jets. Very team that I think just about everyone can look at and say, we have the defense, a championship level. We don't know who's playing quarterback. We don't know what the cap situation is going to look like. Are the Jets going to be super slow on the first couple of days? Are they going to miss out on a ton of guys because they just don't know what the money situation will look like? But one position in particular that can take them over the edge. I, I keep saying that this team is just a quarterback away. That's what I've been telling people. Maybe there were, would be fallback plans. Maybe there were plan Bs and Cs. But really, they had one guy in mind. There's so much promise and there's so much optimism. This team is loaded with young talent. And yet, that quarterback spot, all this stuff, it makes it a very unique process. You know, quarterback, um, I think I speak for every coach in football, is probably the most important position on the football team. Right now, with this roster and trying to put it in the hands of a veteran to, to put us over the hump of those fourth quarters, we, we just thought, thought was the right thing to do. You know, he just plays a different game, you know, he's, um, He's had, he's had so much experience. He's seen every defense. He's seen every coverage, every blitz package, every front. Um, he's well versed in obviously the scheme. And uh, so when you're when you're playing a guy like Aaron Rodgers, sometimes you you might want to have you might get into a tendency of wanting to try to trick him. When at the end of the day, you really just trick yourself. And so the challenge with him is just you know it's it's a battle of battle of wills. You know he's he's gonna know what you're doing. He's gonna know what you're what you're in pre snap and. So execution is always at a premium. Well, for us, you know, just, just going through all the quarterbacks, obviously Aaron, uh, I think his, his resume speaks for himself. And, uh, you know, once you once you realize that, yeah, he's 39, but God, he still throws the ball like he's in his early 30s. You know, he's uh, he's got a lot of energy. He's got a lot of athleticism. He can still rip it. Uh, it, it. It was really kind of an easy decision to just to keep keep working through and 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 try to see if the Aaron Rodgers possibility was even real. And um, as we got deeper into the offseason, uh, once we hired Nathaniel Hackett, and the noise started getting louder, and it just it became clear that it was something that we wanted to pursue. From my understanding, you know, he he called two minute and uh, uh, throughout his entire career, you know, his his ability to move the chains and score points in two minute situations you know the, the NFL is a, it's a it's a game that most games 
ball in the last two minutes. Uh, who has the ball last, making the last drive, scoring points when you need them. And uh, uh, it's something that he's done his entire career. And it's not only that, it's his ability to convert third downs and keep keep offense, keep his, keep the offense on the field and, and move the chains and grind the clock. And he can score explosive with explosive plays. He can score by grinding uh, grinding out long drives. And uh, so he, he's a special talent. And, and the biggest thing is that when he is in the red zone, he scores points. And... Um, and that's going to be a, that's such a big deal, obviously, in this league. The staff has been building this thing through the draft for a couple of years now. Can you just talk about how Joe has really positioned this team to, you know, be in a spot where he can afford to go after a player like Aaron? Oh, for sure. It's been, um, you know, I wasn't here for the first couple where, where they had to tear it all down and, um, you know, since we got here, Joe has been unbelievable with regards to just communicating with the entire organization in terms of what direction we want to go and and really taking the heart and uh, giving us giving coaches kind of a uh, a platform to explain our system to them and and just to, to give us a voice and obviously his scouts a voice and together I think it's it's been unbelievable and his leadership through that. And his decision making through this whole thing has been very efficient, very strong, and and we've been we haven't been right all the time, but we've been right more, more more than we have wrong, if you will, and and it's a credit to Joe and his staff and everything that they do and, and the way they've lined everything up, and we knew that uh, year three would be a year where we where we would push to go for it, um, albeit in different ways, but uh, we've been we've been looking forward to these moments for us uh, since the day we walked in the building. For Robert Sala and the Jets, the ascension to become one of the league's elite begins with one of the most talked about quarterback pursuits in NFL history. Starting with the biggest stories, the biggest questions that we have still remaining, I think there's really only one place to start. I think the New York Jets are fascinating this week because they have made it known that they are in the market for a quarterback and a veteran one. Well, Aaron Rodgers was explaining to Pat McAfee he is going to spend a bunch of time in total darkness in trying to figure it out. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers is as unique a figure in the NFL as there is. He's got interests outside of football. So when he says he goes on a darkness retreat... It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's four nights of uh, complete uh, darkness. And everyone freaks out. I, I say, well, that's, that's, that's Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, Rodgers is option number one for this team, but the fact that they're exploring this Derek Carr possibility tells me that they see the potential in Derek Carr. I would describe the visit between Derek Carr and the Jets as very positive. I think that this is a team that believes that Derek Carr can lead them to a championship. Now, I thought Derek Carr made a lot of sense, and I said it often. It seems like there was a bigger prize that they had in mind. Obviously, you guys have seen reports about uh, us bringing Derek Carr in about a week and a half ago. I can tell you that was a fantastic visit. Uh, we really enjoyed spending time with him. Obviously, he's the, he's the only quarterback that I can, I can really shed any light on for you guys. You may actually have more bites of the apple with Aaron Rodgers than Derek Carr. The New York Jets, are they going to be the first team to say, you know what, we're putting all our cards on the table, maybe. Derek Carr's our guy, let's go. Or are they going to wait on maybe a bigger fish? I don't think the Jets uh, would be in a terrible place if Derek Carr was the guy they pursued. But they're going for a bigger fish. They're going for Aaron Rodgers. The question here is how long can you wait before pushing to sign Derek Carr? So Derek Carr has to make a decision, right? He, he can't wait forever on some other options. It's a tough balance for Joe Douglas, for Robert Self, for this entire building to figure out what they're gonna do here. And the first free agent quarterback domino appears to be poised to fall. Derek Carr, he is now going to the Saints. The Saints, that was always like their option A, getting Derek Carr. I think to me the biggest story is like, okay, what is what is the lead of the Jets? Mm -hmm. The Jets going basically got to be all in on Aaron Rodgers. The delta between Rodgers and most quarterbacks in the history of the game is huge. This guy can still play, he can still do it, and players will feed off that. And I think the Jets have to be considered a legitimate contender in the AFC. With Derek Carr off the table. The Jets have their sights on Aaron Rodgers. After receiving permission from the Packers to speak with him, 
It's wheels up to California to meet with the future Hall of Famer face to face. The New York Jets have flown on Woody Johnson's private plane to California to meet with Aaron Rodgers in person, per sources. They land soon. The Jets get on the plane, they head out to California, they go see Aaron Rodgers, and you know, this is not happening without Roger's blessing. The sense I'm getting is that this is just the first step, hopefully, in, in a string of bigger steps for the Jets. All the right people are in the brigade that's heading out to try and woo Aaron Rodgers. I assume they're out here in Malibu. Okay, that's where okay. okay. Has a house. You go to Malibu and you let TMZ take photos of you. Is Adam, is Adam going to the Jets? Can you go uh, find that? We'll find out and you fly in the offensive coordinator and you fly in multiple owners and you fly in a team president and you do all that and you don't come back with the big fish, well, you better get that big fish and you'd like to think they can get that done sooner rather than later. So here we are, right? The Jets feel good because they gave everything they possibly could right. to Aaron Rodgers to say this is the place where you can come and not only win but perhaps add to your legacy. But it's going to come down to Aaron Rodgers' decision. The crazy part about this entire process is we still haven't heard from Aaron at all since he came out of the darkness. Then out of nowhere, a tweet goes out that says he's appearing on the McAfee show tomorrow, and it just makes you wonder, what's he going to say? Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Wednesday, March 15th, 2023, the program starts now. Much mana! Much mana to you as well, Usas and Usas. Watching all around the globe, yes. today has become a massive day in our program's history because just yesterday, at about 5.15 p.m., I was sent a text that said, hey, I think it's time. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. And I said, what do you mean you think it's time? I think it's time to let the world hear where we're at. And I said, Aaron, you let me know if you want me to let the world know about you coming on tomorrow. And he said, yeah, let's do it. Let's take a two to three minute break. And on the other side, Aaron Rodgers will be here for the first time, long time. Very proud to be here on a proud day and an exciting day for the franchise as we usher in a new chapter. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Joe Douglas to Jets Nation. You're getting a general manager that is a relentless worker, someone that understands a winning culture, someone that is gonna strive to put a product on the field each Sunday that competes for greatness and that I hope will make you proud. How's it going? Hey coach, Joe Douglas. What's up Joe? Yeah, good, good to talk to you again. Oh yeah, no, it's gonna be great. Part of the messaging is to bring things always back to us. Yep. Don't care who you have on your roster. I don't care who you're lining up with. Hey guys, this is the scheme, but they have to deal with us. They have to deal with our speed. They have to deal with our technique. They have to deal with our violence. They have to deal with our relentless, all gas, no break mindset for 60 minutes. Look, the main thing is, you know, we find the guys that fit us, our mentality. They love football. It will take time, but everything we do is going to be designed to win championships in the future. Saw us, uh, him and DJ V would absolutely take over the entire defense. We are, we are in the building. That's right, that's right. We need dogs like you, man. And the defensive rookie of the year award goes to... Sauce Gardner. Uh, just come in, be you. Don't have to do anything special. Just be you and sit and, and, and trust me, being you is good enough. The 2022 AP Offensive Rookie of the Year is... Garrett Wilson. We ask not to judge us on what has happened in the past, but to judge us on what we do moving forward. And, uh, and what, what, what happens moving forward, we think is going to be special. Where I was at mentally was this would be a great transition into uh, the next chapter of my life. So what does it look like? What did you, uh, like, where are you at right now when it comes to everything we hear about the Jets situation? The coaches, GM flew out to see you uh, in Southern California. Where, like, where are you right now? What are we doing? This isn't a decision day. This isn't me deciding and announcing to the world that this is what's going on. Uh, in fact, that's already happened. You know, we're, we're, we're actually days past this. Um, this is kind of clearing things up, I think. 
uh, for everybody interested, which there obviously seems to be a lot of people interested. So no malice, no bitterness towards Packers. It's been bittersweet for sure the last uh, the last 10 days. So I've shifted my focus to entertaining, you know, what the plane would look like mm. and had the, uh, you know, uh, the Packers granted obviously permission for the Jets to come out and visit. We had a nice visit. Um, they decided to leave their cars in the street, which attracted paparazzi attention, which uh, got, you know, a few of them photographed, which I thought was pretty funny. At this point, as I sit here, you know, I think since Friday, uh, I made it clear that my intention was to play and my intention was to play for the New York Jets. Uh, because I still have that fire and I, I, and I want to play and I would like to play in New York. Uh, it's just a matter of, um, you know, getting that done at this point. Hey, thank you for allowing this to happen today. We appreciate you. All right, take care. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Here we are in New York for the 65th annual National Football League selection meeting. In 2000, the Jets made history as the first team to have four first-round selections in the NFL draft. Have you heard the term in New York Minute? The Jets are on the clock, and they couldn't even wait. With the 12th choice in the NFL Draft 2000, the New York Jets select Sean Ellis, defensive end, Tennessee. The New York Jets select John Abraham, linebacker, South Carolina. The possibility that the Jets are going to go for Chad Pennington here. The Jets select quarterback Chad Pennington. The New York Jets select Anthony Beck, tight end, West Virginia. Before the quarterback search took center stage, the Jets offseason began with a key decision. Within the last few moments, we received news that I think ranks right up there, you know, with, with I don't even know what, as maybe the most significant news that I've ever heard in my entire life, and that is that the New York Jets are hiring Nathaniel Hackett as their offensive coordinator. Yeah. Now, go through his litany of successful stops as an offensive coordinator. As an OC, he's fielded a top 10 scoring offense three times as a coordinator. Here's the head coach, Robert Sala. On, on the surface, everybody's looking at what took place in Denver, but there's obviously more to to him than that. Yeah, there. You know, uh, and you got to own it, right? It's part of the resume, I, and I get it. But you know, uh, you got to have the discipline to look past recency bias. But the fact of the matter is, is that he got that to Denver, and he had that opportunity because of his life's work as an offensive coordinator and all the different things that he's done in this league, and how much respect he's garnered throughout the league, and all those different spots, and all the people he's. Uh, all the co uh, players he's developed in his career and the and the and the people that he's worked with. So, uh, like I said, super excited about him being our offensive coordinator and giving him an opportunity to work with our young guys and uh, and all the uh, uh, things that we've got going for uh, going for us. Coach, before we get going, mind just yeah. The, um, so. Wide receivers, uh, kind of the way that we look at them is um, there's three positions that we'll utilize. Uh, for the wide receivers, obviously for all players, toughness and intelligence is so important. Intelligence, especially for a wide receiver, because the more intelligent he is, the faster that he can learn a concept, and the faster we can put a guy anywhere on the field. A guy like Devontae, one thing that um, I think is so special about him is his intelligence is off the charts. In my opinion, for football, that's what made us uh, have the ability to move him around all over the place. As they wait on QB1, the Jets are prepared to add horsepower to the offense, and adding to the receiver room is step number one. We are back on Get Up. I told you Adam Schefter was on the phone, and there was good reason for that. Shefty with breaking news. Shefty, take it away. Greeny, your New York Jets are actively working to try to sign Packers free agent wide receiver Alan Lazard. He and the Jets finalizing a four-year, $44 million deal. Now, this deal has come up over the last couple of days. Lazard, a player that I know a lot of teams like, and this is a good number for a wide receiver in this market right now, because a lot of wide receivers are going to be well south of this number. Three, two, one. Alan Lazard, flight 23. I mean, it, it, it's a good move by the New York Jets. He's bigger, he's more physical, he's better in the red zone. For it all, and Lazard has the catch down. Lazard! You know, the biggest thing that drew me to 
the New York Jets was really New York. I was ready for the big lights in the city. Alan, what, what does this uh, mean to you going from being an undrafted uh, rookie to, to where you're at now, signing this big deal with the Jets? It means everything. My dreams, uh, my ambition have never wavered. But going undrafted, uh, being in Jacksonville on the practice squad, getting cut twice, still I still feel undrafted because the checks haven't hit yet. <laughs> that boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, watching Brees play at Iowa State um, took gave me a lot of pride um, as an alum. I remember my sophomore year of high school, I used to be watching this dude on TV. Right. Now I'm playing with him. This one for Lazard makes the play. Touchdown. You know, I think what makes me so unique is that um, the diversity that I bring in the offensive game. If you take away one part of my game, then there's a lot of other things that I can bring to the table as well. He's got good ball skills. He's really good target in the red zone. I'm, I'm one of those guys who just loves guys who, who come from, from the bottom and made his way up. news in the Jets' pursuit of Aaron Rodgers. Yesterday, they signed free agent receiver Nicole Hardman, formerly of the Chiefs. And then they traded receiver Elijah Moore to the Browns, along with a third-round pick for second-round picks. Nicole Hartman, flight 23. The ball coming your way, catch it. Make a play, man. It's all about tonight, baby. It's going so full. You know, one, McCole Hardman, he's more than a receiver. He's a weapon. Explodes, dives, the Jets has landed the plane. Touchdown! Uh, I think, you know, uh, that little bit of locker room, it, it'd be cool, man. I think um, I can definitely bring that championship mentality. Yeah. Good. You feel like Hardman taps the offense? Gas. It goes to Hardman on the edge at the five. Stops, starts, far from Pylon. Touchdown! I think the foundation is built. And I think it's just gonna take like the you know the right mindset, the mentality, and the the right steps to get there. Everything that you know the organization doing here is, is in the right direction um, to, to get there. So that's it for me. Thanks, man. With the NFL draft on the horizon, the Jets lock in on acquiring Aaron Rodgers as the sports world awaits the historic trade. Let's bring Adam Schefter in here. Adam, interesting there from Lynch. What more can you tell us about Trey Lance and the quarterback situation in San Francisco? Oh, Laura, we have breaking news right now. Uh, breaking news. Aaron Rodgers officially is being traded to the New York Jets. And it just came down moments ago in a trade involving six picks. Aaron Rodgers is going to the New York Jets. It's official. It is happening. Finally, after all this time, we've been waiting for this trade to happen, and now it is. And here are the details of the trade that just came down. The Jets are sending their first round pick this year, their second round pick this year. Sorry. Well, hold on. Big swagoo, hold on. Their second round pick next year, it's a conditional pick. They get back, they get back the Packers' first round pick this year and a fifth round pick. And so the trade that we've been waiting for finally has been agreed to. Aaron Rodgers is being sent to the Jets and the Jets have a quarterback and the Packers have extra draft capital and extra draft ammunition. Breaking news. The story of the offseason has officially broken. Finally, finally, finally. The Jets and Packers have agreed to their mega trade. It was going to happen. It was going to happen before the draft. And it has. Aaron Rodgers is now officially a New York Jet. Wow. Aaron Rodgers is a f Jet. Wow! Aaron Rodgers is officially a member of the New York Jets. Let's go! could not have drafted this up better if you are a Jets fan as it pertains to the X's and O's. This means they have an opportunity to do something special. <sighs> oh. This guy on double check. All of a sudden we're going to see this offense clicking on so many cylinders. They're dangerous. These weapons that are at Rodgers' disposal, this is going to be a fun team to watch. Aaron Rodgers is a New York Jet. <laughs> Let's go! Is it done? It is? We got him? Yes. You know, he's one of the handful of greatest players ever at the position. Monday, April 24th, just before 5 o'clock, that's when everything changed. We are back! We are back! We are back! We are back! All I gotta say is 
say is J E T S. I literally had to pull over on the side of the road because Aaron Rodgers is a New York Jet. Oh, oh my God, we got all of this for I'm so excited. Aaron Rodgers is a member of the New York Jets. Woohoo! Booyah! The amount of games that I've been in person where Aaron Rodgers has torn the heart out of an opposing fan base and an opposing team. This guy is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time and he's still got it. How's that for a sound bite? Use that one instead of me all over the Jets. How's that? <laughs> it's the dawn of a new day in Florham Park. All eyes are on the Jets as the team prepares for the arrival of their new quarterback. There'll be a physical, there'll be potentially a press conference with Aaron Rodgers inside this building that you're talking about, at which point it's going to be real. It's going to be like, well, this was a long process. We got here. Now Aaron Rodgers is here. And I had a, a Jets fan, friend of mine, many of which I've heard from the last couple of days, ask me, what's the vibe out there today? And I said, yeah, there's a lot of excitement like Joe Douglas was talking about, but the vibe's going to change once he walks inside this building. It's going to change for everybody here. Jets fans, will be, we've been waiting for this, and I'm so excited. I mean, this is a great day for the organization. Our, our staff is really excited. You know, I think it's something that the fans deserve, you know, our staff deserves. Uh, but the people are really excited about jumping on board with the Jets this year. You, you got Aaron Rodgers, and I'm sure Jet fans are really happy about that. They got Rodgers. They have Rodgers. Uh, listen, I think they're going to be really, really good. The only thing I will say is that seats are going really quick, so all of our like, lower rows and aisle seats and stuff like that are going to be gone. The excitement of getting something or getting someone that you think is going to change the trajectory of your team. So just to give you a little bit of background here for our season tickets for the upcoming season, so. When we sell a season ticket, we ring the bell. So everybody in the organization, hopefully they can hear it all the way down the halls in the organization. So it's been, the bell's been ringing a lot in the last 24 hours on top of the, the last few weeks we've had here, so it's been great. There's no price tag high enough to get a difference maker, especially at that position. Watch out, everybody. Here come the Jets. Here come the Jets. stuff that comes with this Aaron Rodgers deal is going to happen now him getting here the press conference obviously every single jet game is going to be an event at this point because they're going to be one of the hottest stories in sports Aaron's one of the one of the best quarterbacks to ever play this game to to have an opportunity to to add a player of that that caliber um you're always gonna you're always gonna look into it we're all excited to add someone of of his character and his ability you're acquiring uh, one of the greatest throwers of the ball that we've ever seen in this league. Are we ready for it? On March 6, 2015, the Jets made a splash acquiring Pro Bowl receiver Brandon Marshall from the Chicago Bears. Aaron Lott, Brandon Marshall's got it! To the end zone, it's Marshall! Touchdown, Jets! 
Jets. Marshall was a force for the green and white, amassing over 1,500 yards and hauling in 14 touchdowns. He was named a second team All Pro for his record breaking campaign. The throw, it's in. Marshall's got it. Touchdown, Jets. All right, so the big news with the Jets and the Packers, they wanted to get it done now. The Packers certainly did. Aaron Rodgers, officially a member of the New York Jets. I think the Jets will feel bigger and better as a franchise day one. Sala and the Jets brass have a reason to smile. They just pulled off a trade to acquire one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. When I think of the greatest, I think of a man called Aaron Rodgers. He's the number one player in the NFL. Aaron Rodgers, what are you talking about? I think he's definitely a top three quarterback ever to live. I think Aaron Rodgers is the best football player who ever lived in the sense that he has more sway over the outcome of a game than anyone else who ever lived. I'm looking at him and I'm just saying, He's a bad man. He could do it all. When people say Aaron Rodgers is great, they don't do him justice. He's historically great. Rodgers in rhythm, tosses in zone, and he caps it off with a touchdown. Simply remarkable, and that is what Aaron Rodgers is as a passer of the football. Now escapes. Will he try to run it? Throws across his body. He's got it! He's the greatest quarterback that I've ever seen. He's the greatest, most talented quarterback that I've ever seen with my two eyes. Aaron Rodgers is legit. You can't throw the ball any better than that. Who does that better than Aaron Rodgers? The run, touchdown, Green Bay. Best quarterback I've ever seen in my life. Not to mention the ability to make the big throws, the special throws. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Aaron Rodgers going for the kill shot. Throws it up in the air, says a prayer. Oh my, that may be one of the great throws ever made. He turned 32 yesterday. Does he have a vintage moment in it? And he's caught for the win! For the middle, caught. Touchdown, Rodgers. Jordy Nelson, touchdown, Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers, our MVP. This is a great group of men. It's just great to be able to share it with them. Sarah, have we met? No. Other Sarah. Other Sarah. Other Sarah. Other Sarah. Other Sarah. <laughs> Good memory. Is it okay if we put a mic on you? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, come on. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We can just run this up your shirt for me, please. Yeah. You want me to place it like here? Is it okay if I stick it for you? Go for it, yeah. Appreciate get on, it. Get on there. Yeah. 
can't say I haven't been dreaming about this. You know, once I realized this was not just a probability, but an almost certainty, you start to take your mind to all the different things that uh, a new place has to offer the first time you walk in the building, the first time you walk past the trophy, the first time uh, you meet some of the guys, the first time you walk into the locker room, first time you sit down for an interview. Um, deep down, a lot of excitement, a lot of gratitude, not just for the journey of 18 years in Green Bay, but for the opportunity now to continue playing and, and play for an iconic franchise again. The fact that we're here today is really a testament to what's been going on here and what the coach and the general manager and the staff has built over the last two years. The culture that enabled us to attract somebody of the caliber that we're looking at right now, Aaron Rodgers, a Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer. Aaron is a tremendous player, is an understatement, and he makes everybody around him better. And we're so happy to have him. We are delighted and happy. We couldn't be happier to have him as a New York Jet. Um, this is a surreal day for me. After spending 18 years in the same city, I'm here because I believe this. I believe in this team. I believe in Coach Sala. I believe in the direction uh, of Joe Douglas, and I'm excited about the new adventure here in New York. So I'll open up to questions now. I just wanted to know your motivation to continue to play at this point. Obviously, you said you were 90% retired once you went to the darkness retreat. To be a part of something special is what keeps you coming back. And I think this is, this is building right now. And what Coach has done the last couple of years, uh, he's building something special the right way. We're going to make this thing uh, start to hum, I think. I'm excited. Obviously, Garrett had an incredible season. You know, I think that they've added some good pieces. Obviously, Alan Lazard, I'm partial to him. I play with him for a number of years now. I love him. He's an incredible guy. I'm excited about working with Hack and, and uh, seeing how he tailors his offense to the guys that we have. What do you think that winning a championship for a New York franchise that hasn't won one in decades would do for your historical standing in the sport? To be a part of something special would uh, definitely help you go down in the history of an organization. I already have 18 years. Uh, in an incredibly iconic organization and it'd be fun to be a part of the history of this one as well. The passion you can feel, I mean I felt it at the end of that game at Lambeau last year. There were obviously so many Jets fans there and she realized how special that fan base is, that they'll travel, they'll show up. I think that's an exciting draw to this as well, as being a part of something special. I grew up watching old VHS tapes of, uh, of the Super Bowls and so obviously I know about the guarantee and, and Broadway Joe. I just have to trust that this is the path I'm supposed to be on. And from the moment I got out of the darkness, this was the signs and synchronicities that were happening in my life was that this opportunity was gonna be something really special. I noticed uh, walking in this morning that that uh, Super Bowl three trophy is looking a little lonely, so. When I'm all in, I'm all in. And I want it to be, I want it to be a full F yes, honestly. And, and coming out of the darkness retreat that I did and starting to get back into my workouts, uh, this opportunity came up. This was really the only place I wanted to be. Um, I have a lot of uh, uh, respect for Coach Sala and the way he goes about his business. So this to me seemed like the best place to be for me and the only place ultimately because I feel like the pieces are in place to make a run, uh, you know, to get another one of those trophies. It's just about maturing as a group and taking the next step. And the next step is, is greatness. It's, it's not... Uh, you know, just getting into the playoffs or sneaking in or having a winning season. It's, uh, uh, it's doing what, uh, you know, what I think, what uh, Woody thinks, what Robert and Joe think is possible, and that's putting together a really special run.
A picture is worth a thousand words. The stories written on each face. The journey to reach this point. A moment in time. In sports, every season begins with a blank page. An opportunity to hold the pen and write a chapter that will be etched in history. But this story began long ago with one thing tying it all together. You see, this team is about all of us. It unites us, inspires us. I remember years going to Shea Stadium. The family, especially for New Yorkers, to bring us together. And now, hopefully, we got a good chance this year. It's Weeb, Curtis, Rivas Island, and the Sack Exchange. It's Broadway Joe. They have the greatest city in the world. They tribute to the greatest football team in the world, the New York Jets. It's unwavering loyalty, a green and white conviction. I just won the number. I just won the Super Bowl. We're going to the Super Bowl. That's we it. That's it. Right. A guaranteed passion. J E T S Jets, 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 Jets. So here we are, 2023, a new chapter. Are you ready? Let's ride. Let's go. The fan base, they're desperate and so hungry for uh, a winning team to go to the playoffs, to get back in the Super Bowl conversation. And so am I. I mean, that's why I'm here. I'm here because I believe in the organization. I believe in Coach Sala. I believe in Joe Douglas and the way that he's drafted. I believe in Coach Hackett with all my heart, and I believe in this team, these guys. I mean, these guys are talented guys. You know, like I said, I'm not here to be some sort of savior messiah. I'm just here to play great football, to hopefully inspire the guys, uh, to find ways to connect and, and increase the chemistry, to, to help foster an incredible culture, and to give this fan base what they've been wishing for for a long time, a team that they can really, really be proud of.